All right, welcome to the Remarketing Podcast. My name is Jerome Lewis. I am your host for today, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our structure and how the podcast works. Our content is about marketing, tech, and business leadership, and our content is for real estate agents, investors, and entrepreneurs. We have two purposes. Number one, Adam, to spotlight you, your business, your service, in a way that provides value to you, including market exposure and content creation. Number two, to educate and inform our audience and listeners. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna introduce Adam. Adam, Adam Balzinger is a real estate entrepreneur. He's been a full-time real estate investor for eight years and was featured in the top 100 in real estate magazine for 2021. Adam is a partner in two real estate businesses. He is a, he has a wholesaling team in the greater Philadelphia that expects to break seven figures this year. And he is also a multifamily syndicator who controls 27 million in real estate with another 40 million set to close in quarter one of 2022. Adam considers himself an entrepreneur before a real estate investor, and he is passionate about helping entrepreneurs. His syndication team focuses on helping entrepreneurs invest in real estate without having to deal with the headache of tenants and toilets. And he will soon be releasing a podcast for his own, of his own titled The, Real- the Entrepreneur Boardroom. Adam is married to the love of his life. Together, they have a baby girl and are expecting a new addition to the family come July. Adam. Welcome to the podcast. Good to have you here, man. Jerome, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. Happy to be on. Excited. Nice, nice. So uh, the way our structure works is I generally like to ask some questions around business. Then we jump into personal and then we close out. I like to call it the closing table. So I'm going to ask you some final questions and then we're going to proceed from there. You like that? It's a little real estate, you know. I'll the pick it up what table. you're putting down, bro. I got yeah, you. I you, got pick it, you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I want to start with the first question. And that first question is, Adam, in your industry, what is a common myth around that you hear? Hmm. A common myth. Yes. What is a um, common myth about your field of expertise? So... I I think that this is a common myth, not just in real estate, um, but in entrepreneurship in general. And I really think, honestly, man, like you can apply it to uh, starting a lot of things from scratch. Fake it till you make it. I absolutely hate the idea of fake it till you make it. Let you know, I don't hate the idea of fake it till you make it. I, I hate what I hate the way that I think a lot of people interpret that statement. So I think what people mean when they say fake it till you make it is that um, you have to instill confidence the way that you would when you're first getting started, the way that you would when you're 10 years in the business, right? Um, because there's a lot of unknowns whenever you're starting anything. And so the idea of fake it till you make it is that you're exuding the confidence that you're going to figure out whatever those unknowns are, and you're going to deliver for um, your client, your customer, your investor, whatever, Um, you know, you're going to pull out all the stops, you're going to make it happen for them barring, you know, doing something illegal. And I think that the way that people hear and interpret um, fake it till you make it is I'm going to lie through my teeth and I'm gonna make myself sound like I am more experienced than I really am. And I'm gonna tell a fake story about my background and I'm going to avoid being honest with people because honesty would, would um, kind of pull back, on the, pull back the curtain on their lack of experience. And so I think that a, a, a really bad myth that is kind of permeating real estate and entrepreneurship is, in general is this idea of like, misrepresent yourself because people think they're faking it until they make it. Does that make sense? That does make sense. And one of the, re- one of the things I want to like ask you and get your perspective on, I think fake it till you make it is so cool is because it's a catchy statement. And I, I agree and with you. Rhymes. Like so many people, right. It rhymes. Exactly. Fake it till you make it. It's so cool and it's cute, but it's like, all right, well, what do you like? You kind of nailed it in what you were saying, but it just wasn't catchy. Right. So you said that uh, it's it's to inst- for people to be confident, right? And that's I picked that up, but that's because I'm not going to say these. Uh, let's be honest: if you're faking it and lying, you're not. You don't have much integrity, so I'm just going to say it. So, 
Fake it till you make yes. it is a it is catchy and it's cool. How would you tell somebody to how would you tell somebody that in another way? That's not um, as long winded as you got to do like that. We're going now. Like, what's a catchy phrase to kind of help them still? Yeah, I, I might need your help on that, brother, because I'm kind of long winded to, to begin with. Um, but I think that it's just having confidence in yourself and your 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 path right and and mm -hmm. knowing that you're going to do right by somebody and that you're going to pull out all the stops to perform and to honor your word so okay. i think it's really just having confidence and acting with integrity um, but like you said it's not quite as catchy yeah and i was going to say so the bottom line to me is like have confidence and that's it like and, and work with integrity like you don't need to lie uh, and there are ways to make yourself look better and put yourself in better light without necessarily lying but the mm -hmm. bottom line is like have confidence in yourself so uh, i yeah, think I that's mean, a good way to summarize dude, it and and i think that this this applies so um well to the real estate space because um you know i, I have this facebook group there's there's like 20 some thousand people in it and it's geared around multifamily real estate and there's a lot of people in there that are trying to wholesale large multifamily properties. And the way that they're doing it is not following the letter of the law with the way that um, real estate is supposed to be done, right? So what you have a lot of people doing is wholesaling, but they're actually acting as a broker without a real estate license. And so... You know, there have been instances where I've I've kind of messaged the person and said like, hey, you might want to watch out what you're doing. And I get this like puffing up of the chest of like, oh, like you don't know what you're talking about. And like, this is how it's this is how I do it. And like, blah, 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 blah. It's like, look, do what you're going to do. Right. Like, I'm just giving you some perspective as somebody who actually runs a wholesaling business and has spent money on multiple attorneys to review documents and and. Um, you know, make sure that I'm not getting myself into trouble. And that's one of those instances of this fake it till you make it where it's like, no, but no, no, I know what I'm doing. But this is how it's done. Right. It's like, mm, well, maybe just be open to hearing a different opinion or a different perspective. Yeah, like like um, so one thing that I respect about you, Adam, was you had shared a post about like your podcast and it had like your face on it and everybody was like, Oh yeah, put your face on it. And, and I was like, nah, maybe you should do that one. And you were like, uh, um, Jerome, we, we talked a little bit and he was like, look, I chose this one because you know, it was more about my audience. And I was like, wow, I've really like, I already respected you from, you know, a distance because we got some of the same colleagues and stuff, but I was like, it was a, a very different opinion that I gave and it wasn't to tear you down or anything like that. But it was like, look, in my experience, this is what's working. And majority of people are going to tell you one thing, but this is how it, this is my suggestion and my perspective. And there's no right way, but I was speaking from experience and I was speaking from people that kind of do these things. And I admire the fact that you were like, oh, I took that advice despite what everybody else said, because they were all your friends and family, they were supporting you, but that wasn't necessarily all the audience. So I admire the fact yeah. that you can yourself take a different perspective. Bro, they were yesing me, right? I mean, yes. I was, I asked, I, I was basically trying to take the temperature um, of the market, right? And ironically, you, um, the guy that runs a mastermind that I'm in, Don Costa, him, and one other person who is a real estate entrepreneur here in the greater Charlotte area where I live, a good buddy of mine, Ed, um, the three of you were the only people that were like, dude, I like, you should do something different. And I could have, I could have reacted two ways, right? I could have like been prideful about it and butthurt about it and, um, you know, not listened and been like, oh, like Jerome and Ed and Don, like, don't like me, like, oh, fuck that, right? Um, or like I could man up, be in a grow, be a grown up. Like, don't let it hurt my feelings. You're not coming from right. a place of attacking me. Like, you're just giving me your expertise. And quite frankly, I felt like you guys were were um, you know probably a little bit more well versed in that specific area, right? Like, I'm not uh, like images, right? Like, I, like I'm I, I'm okay with marketing, but I wouldn't consider it to be 
um, you know, my, my like God given talent or whatever, in terms of, of coming up with good thumbnails for, for things. Right. So, um, I took that advice. I adjusted completely. We totally changed it. And I really like what we came up with now. Like, I like so it thank too. You. Thank you. Thank you for that you're feedback, welcome. Jerome. You're, you're the welcome, man. man. You're welcome. So we, we keep, we keep talking about this Facebook group. Could you talk about the Facebook group? Can you tell us the name? We got it linked in the show notes and then tell us how you grew that group so fast because you had amazing success growing that group. Yeah. So it's the multifamily apartment investing initiative uh, is the name of the Facebook group. My wife and I are total uh, like comic book um, superhero movie nerds. And so like the Avengers initiative, we, we turned into the, the multifamily apartment investing initiative, right? Um, but so dude, like there is, we're, we're living in this world now where people have realized that there's a whole industry out there in coaching and training and, and courses and, and all this stuff, right? And like, I think there's some people out there that do a really, really, really great job um, with the courses and, and the guru world and all that stuff. And I think there's, you know, just like anything else, there's good and bad in every industry. There's good and bad doctors, there's good and bad teachers, there's good and bad cops, like you name it, right? And, you know, I spent 50 grand learning how to do multifamily apartment syndications. And, you know, let's be real, not everybody has that kind of capital. And so I wanted to create a space on the internet where people could come for free and they could have almost like a free mastermind. You know, they could learn about the industry. They could present questions and challenges that they were facing and deals that they were looking at or in their businesses. People could share wins. Um, people could potentially partner up, do deals together, right? Like you name it. And I've really kind of, that's been like the, the end goal or the purpose or the mission statement, right, of that Facebook group. And so I'm just constantly trying to add value in that Facebook group. I run a free um, webinar every single week on various topics relating to multifamily apartment investing. I'm, and I've done everything from a duplex up to uh, 130 units is the largest deal that we've closed to date. And so, you know, I have a pretty good, like, uh, I guess, spectrum of experience from a multifamily perspective. So, you know, I'm talking about a lot of stuff. I'm adding a lot of value. And I really think that that's what's done it. Thanks. I kick, uh, I kick people out right away that aren't adding value. And so, you know, I think that, that, uh, that people recognize that. Yeah. And we got to get, we got to get you some help with some of those ads. I know, man, but... I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we breezed over the, the free webinar. Can you uh, talk about and promote that, that webinar, how often it is, when it is, and how people can get access to that webinar? <clears throat> yeah, sure. So uh, you got to join the Facebook group. Um, it's a private group. So you have to join it. You have to kind of share with us like who you are, what your experience is in multifamily. We learned um, that we needed to do that to, to kind of qualify people before we let them in, um, into the group. And so Typically, that is a uh, Thursday evening at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time webinar that I do. Um, but, you know, I'm busy. We're, we've got deals that we've got going on. So like last week, I had to bump it to Wednesday. This week, um, my wife and, and, you know, and I are taking our baby down to Florida. Um, so we're doing the webinar um, Wednesday night again. But I, I have it up in the Facebook group. It's in the events section of the Facebook group. And I'm always promoting what the topic is. I'm always asking the group, hey, what are some things that you want me to talk about? Um, Jerome, I don't know about you, man, but you know, when once you're doing something for a while, like I'm the type of person that kind of forgets what it was like to, to be the new person sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Because you're just doing it all the time, right? So it just kind of yes. becomes second nature. So it sometimes it's very difficult for me to go back in time and put myself into that place of like being a newbie and just getting started, being like, "What the heck does like this this terminology mean?" Um, and so I kind of lean on some of the uh, lean on the group to give me some ideas. I come up with ideas on my own. Uh, but so like tomorrow night is is basic terminology within the multifamily space. So. You know, if you're talking to a lender or you're talking to a broker and you don't know uh, what cap rate means or you don't know what IRR means, like you're not going to be taken seriously. So, um, you know, that's what we're focused on um, this week's. OK, thank you. So we'll get links and everything promoted in the show notes. 
uh, I want to jump on to the next question. And the next question we have for you is what's the biggest challenge you're facing in your business currently? And how are you tackling that challenge? Yeah. Um, so, you know, my, so like I said, like you had mentioned, I have two real estate businesses. Um, you know, the wholesaling business really is, I don't want to say on, on autopilot at all, cause that's not really true, but I've been able to, to, to identify team members and put team members in place that have allowed me to kind of pull myself out of the day-to-day -day operation of that business. Um, so we're, we're kind of constantly just working on adding and strengthening the team. Um, so there's no real major thing that we're, we're necessarily working on in that business. Um, on the multifamily syndication side of things, uh, you know, that industry, in my experience, is a lot about track record. And so we took, it took us two years, Jerome, to get our very first multifamily deal, like literally two years, knocking on brokers doors, building relationships, taking people out to dinner, taking them to basketball games, like you name it, right? Looking at properties, submitting offers, nothing, nothing, nothing for two years. Um, and when you think about it from the seller and the broker's perspective, it makes sense, right? I was coming in with 18 doors like, yeah, I can, I can perform on a $7 million transaction, right? It's just like, well, can you? <laughs> right? right. Um, and that's where like that fake it till you make it, why I'm so, you know, adamant about like having confidence um, because I'm not going to lie and say, oh yeah, I've raised this capital before, but you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying like, look, if, if I commit to a deal, like we're going to pull out all the stops to get the deal done. Um, but so, you know, it took us two years to get our first deal. Um, we closed our first deal September, 2019. We closed one deal in uh, 2020. We probably would have done more, but COVID kind of threw a wrench into lending and, and all that stuff, right? Um, we did three deals last year and we have four deals under contract, as you mentioned um, right now, all set to close in Q1. Um, so we have two deals closing, Jerome, next week, March 1st, March 2nd, boom, boom, right? And so as you're doing these bigger and bigger deals, the need for capital grows kind of exponentially. So the biggest thing that I'm focused on right now in my business, I have a business partner, um, you know, we kind of divide and conquer, we separate roles and responsibilities, and we try to really stay in our own lanes. Um, but I spearhead the marketing, branding, investor relations side of the business. So what I'm really looking to do, instead of going out and meeting investors one at a time at different networking events, I'm really looking to utilize the power of social media and technology to create a brand that attracts investors to us. And so I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm like a sculptor, right? And I'm trying to like create this sculpture and I'm just chiseling away, uh, you know, day by day at, at working on building and establishing that brand. And honestly, bro, like that, that podcast, the entrepreneur boardroom is really a part of that. And, and so we talk sometimes and I have some ideas for you. And especially when you start getting the podcast going, I have some ideas on how you can change and like, actually like, do really well with that stuff. And like you see, like in my background, like there's a book. And one of the reasons why I did the book was because that's part of that marketing, that branding, and it helps make your marketing so much easier when you can yeah, like do it like this. Too, right? Yeah, it really increases your credibility beyond what you can imagine. And <clears throat> people, that's, so we're gonna talk like offline about how you can take some of the content and some of the things that you're already doing and increase in, like, like knock it out. Like the problem mm -hmm. that you're having. We'll talk offline about that because I have some ideas for you. You're gonna be like, that was so easy. All we had to do was this, this, this. It's so mm -hmm. easy once you start creating the content. Once you're out there, you know, doing the podcast, doing the interviews, doing the webinars. Like you got everything you need, and now it's just a matter of putting it all together. And we'll yeah. talk about how you can do that a little bit later. So, yep. Next question I have for you is, uh, no, what I wanted to know is. I like to always, I always like to ask you as well as Charles, because you two help understand, like I've heard it, but I know you two personally and to hear it come from somebody that you kind of personally know is really helpful. So uh, 
the the residential real estate space and the like syndication and the commercial space, they're just different industries, right? And a lot of times people, they get obsessed and it's like, oh, I'm going to go do the multifamily. I'm going to do the $1 million deals because if you could do one deal, you might as well do 10 at the same time. And it's like, it's not that simple, right? And one of the things that I've learned and I yeah, picked up is- bro, that, it's hard to sell courses when you're talk, when you're to, like explaining how difficult shit can really be, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. So- in your experience, could you talk about the differences? The first, I want to hear about the importance of relationships inside of the multifamily and the syndication space. And after that, I want you to talk about the differences because you're in the residential when you do some of the wholesale stuff too. And I just want to hear about the differences from you and your experience. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to flip flop that that the way okay. that I answer that question, Jerome. Mm -hmm. um, Bro, the difference is that it is a more sophisticated game. Okay. Multifamily. Multifamily, right? You've okay. got, you're dealing with bigger deals. You're dealing with bigger dollars. Um, there's more moving pieces to every single deal. There's more issues that can pop up. There's more ways that you can add value to properties and because the, the numbers are greater, it generally just draws a more sophisticated level of individual, right? And so um, you have to like, as you're getting started, it's hard to kind of break into that space because you're like an outsider trying to penetrate this almost like old boys club kind of vibey industry. Um, because a lot of the players in the space, like the big players, I mean, there's deals that we're going after now that we're, we've kind of leveled up and, and we're looking at a hundred units and up. And, um, you know, we were not taken seriously as viable buyers in those deals when we were first getting started because we had no track record. So we had to kind of play in a little bit of a smaller deal size um, in, in, in a range of number of units. And we really wanted to, because we had to kind of like build a track record, right? Well, now that we're looking at deals that are over 100 units, like there's instances where, you know, we're up against like a Wall Street institution, like we're bidding on the same property as like a hedge fund. Um, and so like, that's what you're coming up against when you get into um, this space. And so that's really then also the reason that the relationships are so important. Um, you know, real estate itself is a small industry, like Jerome, did you and I know some of the bigger players all over the country in the residential space because we've been doing this for a while, right? But the space within multifamily and commercial multifamily is even smaller. So, you know, you can really quickly and easily develop a, re uh, a reputation and sometimes that reputation can be good and other times it can be bad. Perfect example. We had a deal under contract. We actually wound up um, pulling out of the deal during due diligence. We didn't like some of the stuff that we discovered um, when we were doing like our physical property inspection. Um, but the gentleman that was selling that property, dude, every single person that I spoke to about the deal that we were buying was like, oh God, good luck dealing with him. That guy's a total dick. That guy's an ass, right? And they didn't, they didn't even know, like I didn't even tell them the name of the guy of the seller. They knew who the seller was because of the property that I referenced. Right? So that's how small that space, uh, the commercial multifamily space is. And so super important reputation, the relationships that you build because word travels fast, right? And I, dude, I think you and I both know that word travels faster when it's bad than when it's yeah, good. Absolutely. Easily. Yeah. Next, next question. In your opinion, what is the most important personality trait slash strength someone would need to work in your industry and be successful? Uh, persistence. <laughs> but I, I, I think that it's persistence in any sort of uh, entrepreneurial endeavor, right? Because um, there is no um, textbook, right, on entrepreneurship. Like, oh, you're like this and you're starting here. So you need to do boom, 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 boom. A lot of entrepreneurship is figuring out as you go. And so the ability to just kind of, I guess, a willingness to give it a shot and to know that you're going to figure it out no matter what happens um, is super important. And persistence is part of that, right? The only way that you can fail is to give up. And I'm never going to give up so like success is, is essentially guaranteed for me, right? I like that. And 
I was thinking I, I have a like a, a colleague and he's like, it's it's not enough here. The plan is not right. And I'm like, we got to I, I understand. I understand where you're coming from, but we got to keep going. We got to move. Part of entrepreneurship is going even when it's not perfect. Right. Yes. You want to have the perfect plan, but it, you almost never have a perfect plan. You got to keep Bro, going. It's never perfect. Perfection. Never. Perfection is an illusion. There's no such thing as perfection. When have you ever met a perfect person or seen a perfect business? I have not. I have not. And um, I was I was helping somebody else write a book and she's like, I was just it's so many mistakes in there and I don't know. And I was like, look, you got to get it done. Like most people never get it done because they're so worrying about being perfect. So don't worry about the perfection. Worry about getting it done. And I have yeah. uh, my coach. Her name's Darcy. She's like, look, version one is better than version none. And I love that quote <laughs> yeah, because for real. something is better than nothing. Get it done. Uh -huh. Yeah. Get it done. Yeah. You're So I yeah, appreciate that. Dude, um, something that you said there with, with, I believe you said it was your partner. Like it's not right. It's not this. Um, part of the, part of the important thing here is the way that we talk to ourselves so when we say something like this isn't working, that is a definitive statement, right? And so what would be a better way to look at something if it, it, and this is not saying like, okay, let's look at a situation where something isn't working. What's a better way to look at it? This isn't working or how do I make this work better? Or how do I make this work? right? You simply, when you ask yourself that question, your brain almost like subconsciously starts working on alternative solutions. So when we say this isn't working, that's a definitive statement. The brain is not working on solutions to that issue, to that problem. When we pose a question to ourselves in a way that is like us seeking a better solution or seeking a better way of doing it, now your brain starts to work on that solution. Um, so that kind of stuff is like super important when you really kind of get into success and you start studying success. The way that we talk to ourselves is like really important in terms of like the heights that you can reach. I agree. And there is uh, people who ask like, Jerome, how do you get so much? I'm just I'm going to get it done. I bet you don't have. I'm going to get it done. We'll figure it out along the way. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be done. And how many people mm -hmm. can say they've it's done? Not a lot. So right. you separate yourself automatically by just getting some stuff done. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying be sloppy, but get something done. And then you can mm -hmm. always improve, modify, and adjust. Next Absolutely. question we have for you, Adam, is what is one piece of advice you would give someone, give to someone starting out in your career? Start. Don't overcomplicate. Experience is the best teacher. Um, so there's a point where there's a law of diminishing returns on instruction and education right? A lot of people, and you, you said it yourself, like they're trying to get things perfect before they take action. Well, we've already discussed that perfection is, imp is an impossibility. So knowing that perfection is impossible, you become more willing to kind of just put it out there and to get started. And, you know, look, you may have a phenomenal business plan. You could get started. You spent three years on that business plan and three months in, you're like, well, that business plan doesn't work because the need that I thought was out there in the marketplace isn't even there, right? So now you just wasted three years on that stupid business plan. Had you just started three years ago, three months in, you would have known to pivot. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Next question is, who has been, so we, we talked about like education, who has been your most important professional mentor? Ooh. Um, so... That's an interesting question, man, because I've had a lot of coaches and mentors and, and um, stuff over the, over the years, but I would actually say that, uh, so I'm in this group called, a uh, coaching group called the Lion's Den. There's a guy named Sean Whalen. Um, he has a clothing brand called Lions Not Cheap. And um, I stumbled on his content last year and I just really liked what he was about. Um, you know, no nonsense, like live life on his own terms, like has a killer business, wildly in love with his, his new wife, um, in really good shape, seemingly has a really great relationship with his kids. And so I think a lot of people focus overly focus on just one area of their life and they become consumed with this one area and they neglect other areas of their life. And I think I had done that myself for a while. Um, you know, we, we, we tell ourselves like the only way to get ahead in business is to like 
you know, like hustle. Right. And it's like, it's like this badge of honor that we wear, like grind in, right? Like how many times you go on Facebook group and somebody's grinding right. and then that motherfucker, like 10 years later is still grinding. You're like, dude, like you're doing this all wrong. Like you should have been like grinding is a season. It's not a fucking lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so Sean in his group really coaches, he calls it core four. So he talks about essentially your health and your fitness as, as one of the core elements. Uh, he talks about the relationships that you have in your life, both romantic and with family and, and friends, platonic relationships as, as the second. Um, he talks about your purpose, which is like yourself, you know, your spirituality, um, you know, how you are mentally with yourself and, and, and your education um, as number three, and then, you know, work essentially as number four. And so when I started to really kind of prioritize some of those areas, some of those other areas of my life that I had neglected early on as an entrepreneur, dude, like my business has actually started to do better. Um, and it was because I was really investing in myself and looking back on it, I was operating at, with, you know, at like 70% or 75% of my ability because I had neglected my health. Uh, you know, I wasn't hitting the gym. I wasn't prioritizing my, my now wife the way that I should, right? And so um, our relationship is better because I'm prioritizing her and truly like connecting with her. We do date night every other week now so that we can really just kind of like sit down and, and like separate the kid and separate work and like just be with us. And so- I am feeling happier and more fulfilled. And so it allows me to then invest 100% of Adam into his two businesses. And that's been huge. Nice. We Next question is, what's your favorite productivity hack? I had to get this one out because you know I love pro productivity. What's your favorite productivity hack for entrepreneurs? Yeah, man, it's, uh, this is going to sound really boring. It's planning. It's planning ahead. So I that is, plan that is my boring. Yeah. I, but dude, <laughs> it's so like insanely effective. So um, years ago, I read the book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and I learned about the fact that I, I um, have different roles within my life, right? So I am a partner in two real estate businesses. So partner over here, partner over here. There's two roles I fill. I'm also a husband. I'm a son. I'm a dad. I'm Adam, right? And so Adam's fitness is a role that is important to me. So I, I spend time literally, bro, every weekend. Um, I typically do this on Sunday, but I identify the roles that I want to fill or need to fill in the upcoming week. And then I identify the big rocks, the really important things that will will um, move that needle forward in every single one of those roles. And I plan those things into my schedule. And then all the little shit that happens throughout the course of the day. Oh, I need you for this. Oh, I need you for that. Like there's a fire over here. There's a fire over there. Dude, those things fit in where they fit in. Um, and that allows me to then constantly be focusing on things that are needle movers and that will actually push my business forward than spending all day, every day being Adam, the firefighter. Because all that that is, is me working in my business and not me working on my business. All right, perfect. So we are going to move over to a couple of personal questions and then we're going to hit the closing table. Then we're going to get you out of here because we got to go in, what, 17 minutes? So Something like that. first personal question I have for you is what do people misunderstand about you most? Uh, I'm really direct. I don't. I don't mean, well, I, I've actually kind of learned to be softer in my delivery of messages um, because I really, really like people just literally thought I was a dick before. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty honest. I'm pretty forthright. And so some people interpret that negatively, um, like I'm trying to, you know, be mean or whatever. But the way that I view it is that I care enough about people to be honest with them and not sugarcoat and feed them bullshit that's not going to help them. Um, so that would be the one for sure. Okay. And so I appreciate that because I run into that issue myself a lot. And just mm -hmm. yesterday, I post a quote on Facebook and it's like the best quote ever. Like this is like my favorite quote right now. I want to read it. So one who takes offense when no offense is intended is a fool. And one who takes offense when offense is intended is a greater fool. Mm. 
And that's mm-hmm. by Brigham Young. And I like yeah. I saw that quote and I was like, oh my God, this is it. This makes so much sense. I really appreciated that quote. So I wanted to share yeah. that because I get in trouble a lot for being direct too. Well, dude, it's like, well, what do you want? Do you want do you want a cheerleader or you want a coach? Um, right. Because because like I can't fill the one role. Like I can't be a cheerleader and like, yeah, great job. Meanwhile, I know that like you're sabotaging your success exactly. over here. Like that's just not how I roll. Exactly. Next question we have is what's your biggest failure and what did you learn from that experience? Oh man. Um, <clears throat> so I've shared this, uh, you know, I think I could probably do a much better job of, of talking openly about it because I think it's something that a lot of people in, in um, our country struggle with. Um, dude, my biggest failure, like I was a raging um, binge drinker for uh, my late teens, all the way into like my early 30s, bro, that set my life back in so many ways, I would be so much further ahead financially in business, like you name it, um, had I not gone through those struggles. Now, at the same time, like those struggles have have allowed me to become the person that I am today. And I think that one of the reasons that I'm so confident that like, you give me an obstacle or give me a goal, and like, it doesn't fucking matter how hard it is, like, I'll beat it. And I will win is because it's not that easy to no longer drink alcohol when our society is so like culturally designed around drinking, right? Like, you go to a meetup, like everybody's having a beer, right? You go over here, everybody's drinking. And so, um, dude, that was really hard initially. And it was a kind of like internal battle of even accepting the fact that I had an issue with alcohol. Um, a lot of kind of like being honest with myself to um, kind of come to the realization that I needed to make some changes in my life. But, you know, I mean, it was hard, man. Like, to go from drinking and, and I was probably drinking like five nights a week to, to excess, you know, I'm not talking like two beers. I'm talking like three quarters of a bottle of bourbon um, to like never drinking again was a major like mental barrier and mental hurdle that I needed to get over. Um, well, but dude, I was arrested on multiple occasions. Like I, I was pretty convinced I was going to do jail time. Um, I wound up, you know, hired a good attorney, got out of it. And um you know, made some, made some pretty significant life changes. And my life has been so much better ever since I stopped drinking. Congratulations, because I, I understand what you're experiencing because my, uh, my father was an alcoholic and he never got over that. And then right now, personally, I have a close friend that is struggling with that addiction as well. So I understand, uh, I might not know how it is to be in that position, but I have experience dealing with people that you care about in that situation. So yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. And what you've become is an inspiration to those people that struggle with those things. So uh, next question, next, this is the final personal question. Then we're going to close it out. Uh, if you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Um, having a positive impact on people. Um, I talk a lot, man, about you know, business and success on, on social. But I also think that, you know, we live in a really tumultuous time and um, I don't ever remember there being as much like open and rampant division um, in this country and, and in the world um, in my lifetime ever before. And I, so I think we live in a really unique time um, because, you know, there's a really great opportunity for us to unify as a people um, and make some really profound changes that will positively impact our country and the world for generations to come. Um, or I think that we could be apathetic. We could continue to bicker and fight with one another and things could progressively get worse and worse and worse. Um, so, you know, I really, not only do I want to run um, awesome businesses that, you know, have positive impacts on my team members and my team members' families and their families, as well as uh, positive impacts on the folks that live in our properties and the communities that we invest into. But, um, you know, I really want to have a positive impact on just people and mankind in general. So that would be it. Pretty big. But. Appreciate that. So, so we're going to go to the closing table that these are Uh-oh. questions that's going to close us out. And the first question nothing that ever goes you, smooth at the closing table, bro. You nothing, always know there's right? always, <laughs> always issues that happen at the closing table. 
time for the closing table. So let's see if we can get we, we can get all smooth. First question I have for you, and I want you to, so I'm gonna ask you this question, but I want you to include yours in there, right? So the okay. question is, what are three podcasts you recommend and why? So I want two podcasts that you recommend, and then I want you to talk about your podcast. Okay, those that's that really easy, dude. Um, Real AF by Andy Frisella is phenomenal. Um, okay. If you don't know who Andy Frisella is, he runs First Form. Um, which is a massive uh, kind of supplement business. They do $100 million in revenue. He's got his hands in all kinds of other stuff, tequila um, being one, like he's involved in a lot of different things. And he is just, man, dude, he is my guy. He's my type of guy. No bullshit, no nonsense, not PC. Like he's going to tell it the way that he sees it. And I so much appreciate that. So that's one. Um, Mark Evans DM has a podcast uh, called Making of a DM. Mark is um, a really successful entrepreneur guy, started out in real estate, saw success in real estate, took that into other business ventures. And he is what he considers to be or calls himself as a lifestyle entrepreneur. So he's the guy that is buying businesses, investing in businesses, and, and he wants to be able to spend time with his family, invest time with his kids while they're still young, and still have the same positive impact on the businesses that he's involved in. They're both super insightful, way further ahead in their careers than I am. And, and you know, one of my goals is to catch up to those guys. What's, um, what's DM? So he calls himself DM, which stands for the deal maker. Okay, got it. Okay. Mark the deal maker. Uh, so he actually wrote a book years ago on, um, like virtual real estate investing before virtual real estate investing was a thing. Like he was one of the guys that like started that trend. Um, so really sharp guy. And, you know, he's, you know, both of these guys are super vulnerable. They talk about their personal experiences and, and, and I really appreciate people that, that approach business and, and, and stuff that way. Um, you know, you know what I'm excited for. I want to hear about you, yeah, your buddy. podcast. Tell so, us. Yeah. So my podcast is called the entrepreneur boardroom. Uh, it's kind of on brand, right? Like our syndication business is the investor boardroom. Um, but so, you know, man, I, I think that there are like entrepreneurship's gotten to be really, really popular lately. And I think that social media has had a big part in that. Uh, you know, you see 22 year olds with Ferraris and Lamborghinis and you think that that's what being an entrepreneur is. And I think that while there are certainly instances of people that can reach extremely high levels of success at an extremely young age, uh, I certainly don't think that that is the rule. I think that that is the exception. And so I think that uh, entrepreneurship has really been romanticized and it's been presented in a way that is not really accurate, like in real life. And so in my podcast, what I'm doing is I'm bringing on other entrepreneurs and we're simply talking really openly and candidly about their story and their experience, everything from how they got started, to why they picked that business to the challenges that they faced as they were starting their business. Um, you know, what some successes were along the way, what some major screw ups were along the way and when they have to pivot and kind of adjust. Um, and then we even try to take it a step further and talk about like, okay, well, how has this impacted your personal life? And so, you know, we've been doing some recordings and, you know, one of the guys was like, dude, like I was spending all my time working. Like I am literally almost got a divorce. And so these are things that I just think they happen as an entrepreneur, and it, I'm just trying to share with people and pull back the curtain, you know, like Wizard of Oz, right? Like, let's pull back the curtain and see what it's really like to go through this. Um, because while it's been romanticized, it's really hard, man. And, and, and you know that from your experience and it's not for everybody. And so we're really just trying to give people an honest to God, this is really what it's like. And, you know, our hope is that we're sharing some you know, mentality things that are really important to success and some, some actual like actionable items that people can implement into their businesses at the same time. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, in the future, how can we uh, find out more about that podcast? Yeah. Try not to be able to find it if you follow me, because it's going to be everywhere on everything <laughs> that I do. Uh, <laughs> but so we'll be on all the major podcast platforms, you know, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, like you name it. And okay. it'll be the entrepreneur boardroom as of right now. 
Um, the plan is to start dropping episodes on Thursday, March 3rd, and we'll be dropping them every Thursday, a brand new episode. And if you're following me on Facebook or social or LinkedIn, um, you know, you, you, yeah, good luck trying to miss it. If you're following me on any of those okay, platforms. Okay, perfect. All right. So final, we're going to do a final closing question. And then I want to get from you a closing statement because it's appropriate, right? It's the closing table. So mm -hmm. uh, where can listeners find out more about you online? Yeah, my Instagram is the best, best place. Um, you know, so it's at real estate, Adam seven, the number okay. seven, not spelled out. All right, Adam, closing statement. Open-ended? <laughs> Open-ended. Let's do it. Close um, the statement. Close us out. Okay. Let's see. So, yeah, man. Um, you know, I, I think really for, for anybody that's out there, the name of the game is just, you know, taking action and getting started. Um, you know, as we've discussed, perfection is, is not a possibility. Um, you're not going to be perfect even 10, 20 years into the business. Things are always going to be changing. Things are always going to be breaking. The market's going to change. You're going to have to adjust. Um, so quit trying to be perfect and just get started and accept the fact that like, you're going to mess up along the way and there's going to be people that make fun of you. And there's going to be people that talk shit along the way. And, um, you know, kind of like what you were saying, um, with the quote from Brigham Young, something that was really powerful that Sean said to me at one point was, listen, if somebody has something bad to say about something that you've done or you've said, it says more about them than it says about you. So the people out there that are haters and that are chirping and all that other stuff, like the peanut gallery, right? These are people most oftentimes that are unhappy with their present situation. And it makes them feel good to just kind of dump on other people. So don't trip, don't let it bother you. Don't let it, you know, don't let it, don't sweat it. Just take action, continue to push forward. And in two, three, four, six years, those are going to be the people coming up to you like, I knew it. I believed in you this whole time, right? And so just, you know, hey, they didn't. Let's be real. But that's what the, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Adam. It was, it was great to have you here. I really appreciate you, man. Uh, we're going to sign off. <laughs>